President Biden and former President Trump wrap up debate preparations, they might want to consider some advice from a man who has seen and advised on several debates. In a new opinion piece for The New York Times, pollster and communication strategist Frank Luntz shares the, quote, secret, he says, he's learned from watching presidential debates over the past three decades. Quite fortunately for us, Frank Luntz joins us now. Frank, what is the secret you've learned and what advice would you give to President Biden and former President Trump? I'm not sure it's a secret, but Major, you and I have been doing this now <laughs> for more than three decades. And I'm looking down at you because I see you're laughing. We've been doing this for every debate yeah. since Ross Perot took the stage yep. with George uh, Herbert Walker Bush and Bill Clinton. Yep. An example of the secret is that it wasn't Bush looking at his watch that cost him that debate. It was actually Bill Clinton getting off his stool, walking towards the woman so upset over the deficit and what it meant to her and her family, and Clinton empathizing, biting his bottom lip, and showing that kind of emotion that voters so desperately wanted, rather than someone who was a little bit more distant, which was uh, George Bush. Another example, of course, is Reagan back in 1980, asking the famous question, are you better off today than you were four years ago? Or what he did in 1984, cracking a joke at Walter Mondale's youth and inexperience. Sometimes all it takes is a sense of decency, where you communicate face to face. You look the voters straight in the eyes, I'm looking at you right mm -hmm. now, and you communicate your heart and you communicate your soul. Now, let me give you an example of where it doesn't go that way. And that was Donald Trump in 2020. His abuse of Joe Biden in that first debate cost him massive numbers of suburban women who were up to that point undecided, like Trump on policy, but didn't like his personality. And that debate really hurt him because it was too much. And so sometimes it's not winning the debate that matters, it's just not losing it. And Frank, that's a great point I want to pick up on, because as you know, in this process, preparation is also influenced by how you read the race currently. How do you read the race currently? And therefore, how do you think that ought to inform how Biden and Trump approach it? I was shocked that Donald Trump spent the last two months ridiculing Joe Biden for being unable to be president. And now he's trying to say that he's such a great debater. Donald Trump lowered the expectations for Joe Biden so low that if he completes a sentence, if he has a complete thought, the public's going to say, wow, he's perfectly fine. The race is tied. It really is. Uh, if you look at the, the national polling numbers, which you shouldn't, they're dead even. If you look at the key swing states, Donald Trump has a slight advantage. But in the end, I believe the public is going to tune in not to see whether Trump has his act together, but whether Biden does. And that is explicitly because of the campaign that Donald Trump has run. His trying to win the election in April and May may cost him the debate here in June. It's been told to me, Frank, and I wonder if you agree with this, that candidates who believe that debate preparation is designed so they can win policy points or win points of argumentation lose the thread. And the idea is not to do that, but to make yourself as likable and approachable and emotionally available as possible. Where do you come down? I love that. And I'm going to add the phrase, as credible as possible. Because in the end, debates aren't about the last four years. They're about the next four. And already, Donald Trump has won the debate, to a lot of people's surprise, when they're asked whose administration was better for them. Trump has a significant lead. So this is not going to be about the, what happened between 2016 and 2020 or 2020 and 2024. They have to prove that they're better able. And in fact, this is something that Donald Trump should be considering. If I were advising him, which I do not, is not to talk about 2025 and 2026 and not to go back and rehash over the last four years. Keep asking people if this is how he is in 2024. Imagine 2020, 20, imagine, sorry, 2028. Now I'm sounding so horrible. The idea of what things are going to be like four years from now. 
whichever candidate paints a better vision of that future and more credible in the ability to actually get there, that's the candidate that gets more votes. Because, Major, it doesn't matter who wins the debate. What matters is that people change their minds and vote for that candidate. Very quickly, Frank, does it surprise you that in the polling data, memories of the Trump administration really exist in a 2017, 2018, 2019 context, not a pandemic ravaged 2020 context? So you don't know what I'm going to say to you right now, but yes, it does surprise me. I assumed, and I like being candid, and I wish more pundits were, I assumed that after January 6th, Donald Trump was done. And I assumed that the evaluations of him would be based on his COVID work and what happened in those last 12 months. It's not the case. And in group after group, and you do comparisons, Trump it performs better than Biden in terms of presidential ability, in terms of inflation, in terms of immigration. On the issues that matter most, the public has forgotten that last year and has not forgotten the last four years. Always a pleasure. Frank Lutz, thanks so much. Thank you.